Hello everybody, uh, welcome, thanks for joining us. Uh, so yeah, this week's featured show for New Adventures is uh, Lord of the Flies. So we thought we'd have a bit of a, a chat and a Q&A about the show with some uh, people who were involved in the show. So if you'd like to introduce yourselves. Hey everyone, I'm Danny Rubins, also known as Rubes. Hey guys, it's your boy Leighton Williams. How y'all doing? Hi there, Adam here. Back from a long time away. Nice to see you all. Looking forward to the chat. And I'm uh, Dominic North. So let's uh, let me just tell you about the show first. So, Lord of the Flies um, is a, a famous book by William Golding. Uh, there's also been a couple of uh, film versions that we use for research, and I'm sure there's been numerous stage productions. But our version, New Adventures, was uh, premiered the second of March, 2011, uh, the Glasgow Theatre Royal. And then it had a revival, um, well, when was that? Come on, Rubes. Uh, 2014, 14. with uh, 13 UK venues, an extensive tour for a year. And then it had its uh, international premiere at Melbourne Arts Centre, uh, April to 2017. So the aim was to bring together new adventures dancers with local young men, you know, aged between 9 and 22, I think it was in the end. And they had a passion for... Uh, dance and performance, but maybe not so much experience. Uh, it was choreographed by Scott Ambler and directed and choreographed by Matthew Bourne, designed by Les Brotherston, music by Terry Davis, sound by Paul Grutius, and lighting by Chris Davy. So, first off, let's get into these questions, eh? Should we go in the order we introduced ourselves? Let's. Let's say, who did you play, role or roles, and what were they, what were they like? What was their type of character? <clears throat> Okay, so originally in 2011 when we were in Scotland, when we created the piece, I played Roger, which uh, was one of the, part of the crew, the, the chaotic crew. And then when we did the big UK tour, I had the opportunity to play Jack, which is uh, like my first proper principal role of the company and one of the leading guys. And yeah, throughout the tour, like I got to Adam, did Jack as well so I learned a lot from him and like sharing the stage with him and then going on, going in after him and then through all that throughout the tour you know got to really develop that character which was a very chaotic um, angry character um, against against the grain in a way and yeah just it was the first proper role for me where I got to really go to the front of the the stage and like you know I got to do loads of duets I had a lot of um direction from Scott and Matt and Etta just like you know as a character and like building confidence as a, a leading guy really so that was my experience throughout that tour apart from obviously the show itself yes so <clears throat> pardon me I played um Simon and Simon Simon was kind of a bit of an outcast he was not really understood by a lot of the other characters. He lived in his own fantasy solos in the show. Wink, wink. Um, it was really like in his own dream world, I would say. Um, absolutely loved doing it. It was my introduction into the company as well. So I got to work with these absolute stars. Um, and what an introduction too. It was a very different show to be involved in. Um, and amazingly, since we'd done the show, I've worked with a couple of the boys, we can talk about that probably later, professionally as well. So it was a strange but fabulous show to kind of be involved in to begin with. Simon was um, different, just like me, and I loved it. And he got murdered and it was gorgeous and it was drama and fab. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I guess it's my turn. Um, I. I played and created Jack in the original version, um, uh, which was obviously at the time was only supposed to be a, a, a one-off small project. And then uh, the ethos of the project, it, it, was, it was to try and get young men who had never danced before into dancing. And it sort of went down so well that the company decided to do it on the grander scale which is why we had the big tour. And so um, four years later when we did the tour, or five years, whenever it was, um, I 
then moved from performing uh, the role of Jack uh, when Rubes took over <clears throat> and I went to be one of two tour directors. Um, now, I don't know, maybe I'll just explain quickly that because as Domi mentioned earlier, there was one set of performing professional company and then every venue uh, we took on a new cast of local people. And uh, so the company's routine was to, they would uh, rehearse one week and then they would perform the next week. Uh, and so Alan, who was the other tour director, Alan Vincent and myself, we would work in opposite venues. So while the performing company were performing, say in Aberdeen, I was then rehearsing with the young cast in the next venue. And then we would, the company would join uh, and then we would go on like that. It was a little bit like leapfrog, wasn't it, guys? Um, mm. So it was very different going from forming uh, to a sort of more managerial artistic role, but it was fantastic to do. And it is still remains to this day one of the shows that has given me most joy in what we actually all took from it. Um, it was, yeah, it was just an incredible experience. Nice. Uh, I played the role of Ralph, uh, who is charismatic and athletic, as I said in the book. Um, <laughs> <he's> a... <laughs> um, I, I was lucky enough to be in the original cast and then in the revival, and then I was lucky enough to be in Australia with that cast as well. Um, exactly, late. Um, uh. Playing the same role every time. <laughs> <laughs> Looked a bit older every time trying to be a kid. It's just different costume, different music, isn't it? Yeah, a better makeup. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's let's move on. So as we were speaking, then uh, everybody kind of touched on it's a different kind of show, like a new cast every week, um, and with it just being one principal cast, um, it, it's a bit different to how New Adventures usually works, but. I wanted to ask you about the challenges of trying to keep that new adventure standard um, when we were changing so many other things uh, about it. For me, personally, when we were creating it, it was quite strange creating um, something on your own. Usually you, there's a two or three of you sharing a role that you create together. But I, I remember it was just on our own. But, and also, I'd never, I'd never created something from a book. It had been a ballet or a film. So like, it was like you'd read a chapter and then you'd have to go and like portray it. Um, let's take it in order again and see what, whatever challenges and what your thinks of thoughts on it being a different kind of show. Well, the thing is, I remember when we created it because it, at the stage of where I was in my career, I'd literally, you know, second year in with New Adventures and it, would have, it was my first proper creation. So I'd never really experienced what it's like to create a piece mm. with the company. And I've never created a, a narrative story either. I'd, I've been, I'd done some at school, but not to that extreme. And then, um, yeah, I just remember being in the studio with Scott and obviously we we're talking about Lord of Flies, which is all about, you know, kids being, uh, boys being stranded on this desert island and chaos happens. Anyway, I just remember in the lunchtime that we were just sitting at the front and the kids, the, the, the lads were just like running havoc. And I just remember Scott turned around and saying like, he's like, that's actually what it is. You know, you don't have to think too far and sometimes you just got to be, like he always had his eyes everywhere and he could just see it and he would absorb what was going on around him. And that really, for me, made me realize that creative is not necessarily doing it in the time and the space when you're told to do it. Sometimes it's, it's there on a the plate if you just look closely. And then in terms of like my own um, dancing as a professional and keeping up that standard of creating a character and the dancing, both Adam and Alan would always challenge me in terms of some of the solo stuff. And I remember partnering you, Dom, and like really trying to work out the best way that we could do a move or do a lift and so that we were gelling together and also having that combat without having to fight each other, you know, physically. And then getting, you know, that, that frustration of like, you can't do a move or you can't do something because you're constantly being challenged by Adam and Alan. But that's the growth, you know, that's, that's the, the moment where you're, you're improving. Yeah, that was my like creative understanding with Scott in the studio in Scotland. And then also 
as an individual being challenged a lot by Adam and Alan and constantly being asked and questioning everything that I did on stage. Well, for me, it was so different because actually coming into the show, I didn't do the do it originally like you guys. I did create the part. Stepping in for the first time as a welcome into the company. So for me, like you guys, I didn't know the difference. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't know the difference between, you know, creating a part, sharing a part. So I thought it was cute because I thought, well, I got this part, so let's go. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I was really lucky and appreciative to step into new adventures and just be given this gorgeous part. And it was so isolated as well um, in lots of the scenes. So I did get a chance to kind of put my spin on it. Um, but, you know, the part was, was there. There was so much to, he wondered about. It was just all over the place in his own world. So that was kind of nice because I could just kind of like work out what I kind of wanted to do, um, which I think Scott and, you know, all the creators were really lovely with like, you know, yes, it's been done before, but you can put your Latinisms in it, slash Simon, do you know what I mean? You've always got to bring yourself to the part to make it authentic, I think. Um, Absolutely. That was, yeah, that was cute for me. It's just the first time doing, you know, it was the first time for me telling a story just with my body and I, not like in the club, booty popping, do my thing. I.e. like, I don't musical theatre, but I've never done, you know, this, this Matthew Bourne life, this new adventure life. So I was living my fantasy and actually, I really liked the way that we got to have, probably, <laughs> probably not intentionally every time, but we got to have some input and help out the kids as well. You know, like there wasn't enough time every venue for us to be like, right, we had to take the kids aside sometimes and teach them some combos. Sometimes cute, sometimes not cute. Sometimes it was an amazing challenge, even for me. But I was like, I'm a little, little kid too. Some of these, some of these kids were like the same age as me. I yeah. was like, boo. But it was, a, it was an amazing kind of full journey and circle of inspiration, do you know what I mean? I still felt like a, a student fresh out of college and then here I am working with these students who are buzzing to be there. So um, it was a real moment. Mm. Like I didn't really know much to compare it to. So I just rode with it and rode with it. I did. And you guys showed me the ropes, didn't you? Mm. Yeah, I think um, just, just following on there and then I can tag a little bit on is that it was really great from, from what I knew performing when we first created it to where people like yourself, Leighton, <clears throat> Danny, you came in um, and switched roles and how you guys took those roles from, from what they were previously and developed them um, was fantastic. And, and the thing with Flies is, is we didn't have the luxury at all of having our five or six week creation process like we usually do with the shows. Alan and I had a week to teach the show to the kids and without the without you guys without um without the principal cast there you just you just we didn't know what we were going to get um <clears throat> as well as that being daunting it was also really exciting as well um <clears throat> so the challenge for me i think one of the main challenges for me was was um trying to get the kids in shape before the the, the professional company came in the following week um, because I knew that you guys would, would bring it all in. When you get to a level where you're rehearsing with 15, 20 kids with no set, no props, you're just trying to tell them that, oh, there's a big iron uh, structure here and there's a ramp there and a few barrels and just trying to get them to imagine what it's like sometimes i felt like i was flatlining with the like i was like come on you you've, come on it, just imagine it and it was it was hard but as soon as you guys rocked up and as soon as the set turned up it was like it was just it was watching clockwork fit together um the amazing thing was although you guys your all your shows remained pretty constant every venue we went to we always had a different show there was mm. always something new. There was always something fresh, and there was all there's there's something amazing out of every venue that we we all could take something from. Alan and I were <clears throat> ultra lucky to have you guys. How you worked every you, you know even you know if you guys had a little bit of a lull in 
in energy or momentum everyone else would be there to pick you up and get you through and you know we were some of the venues were hard but we got a show every single venue we went to and it was i don't know what these kids did but what i had in the studio from the rehearsal weeks to what was on the stage at the end of that was just mind-blowing and i think the so, issue that i was worried about was am i going to get these people ready but then mm -hmm if i just took back took a breath and knew that i had you guys to fall back on it was a it was the biggest collaboration to get something together that i've ever worked on in in that scale in that amount of time um mm. it was epic so thanks to you lot for uh for yeah, mate. To work. but also mate, it's because like there was a lot of responsibility on you guys you know and and you'd, you'd speak to us midweek you'd be like oh the space is tricky or this and that and then we, we wouldn't know anything and we'd rock up and be like Hey, here we are, and you'd be like, oh, thank God you're here, let's, let's, let's do it. And I'd be like, right, marching phrase C with these guys. Obviously, we had our set tracks, and then the first time we'd do something, you'd go somewhere, and um, there'd be people there, and you'd be like, oh, all right, this week I'm not here, uh, I'll go over here. Or they'd be like, a, a um, vivid always. memory, some funny stuff. Is, you know when there's like intense action between a certain character or whatever, and as you're looking, you just, there's summer and there's somebody there, <laughs> and you're like, all right, there, there, are they? <laughs> It is the, the show that I think requires the most flexibility from the, yeah. uh, from the professional company. Although there was the odd time where, when, when Leighton was like, that's my space. You don't go in my space. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> right. I learned yeah. very early stage that I, if I didn't like come with my notes, notes as well as Matthew Bourne and the rest of creatives, then some things were just not going to ride. Like, it's safe as well, like, these boys, these little 12-year-old, 13, 14-year-old boys had the responsibility of lifting my precious self up and out and all over the stage. <laughs> so when my life depends on these strangers, I need to make friends with them real quick, but let them know, you ain't yeah. dropping me, be careful, watch <laughs> you coming, and let's get this right. Because I had duets with people every week as well, like, the stranger, we're doing full-on choreography, so it was like, you had to trust some kids, you know, and who had never done this before. And it, there was a way of doing it, but I always felt like, you know, I did, we did have good connections with lots of the kids. And when I see them about now, sometimes out and about, you know, in London, in bars, in working spaces, everything, it's just like, wow. Do you know what I mean? The memories yeah. are like, oh, yeah. so That was one of the best bits though, wasn't it? About the, the show was, was the boys, because you'd come in on that Monday afternoon and you wouldn't know anyone. And by the end of the two weeks, you know, everyone's there after the last performance, crying their eyes out and getting emotional because you've just gone through this epic journey of, you know, spending so much time together, performing together. And you could, every week, every two weeks, you saw the growth in these kids. Like, it was amazing. That was, mm -hmm. that was a highlight. And for me as well, it wasn't about coming in and being a professional and doing the job I really felt like I could just be a kid as well like it really felt like I was it was so mutual it wasn't a hierarchy thing or it was such a shared I think, I think space you guys, you guys made everyone uh, like the respect that you lot had there was definite boundaries that were set but you lot really played it on the you were on the same level respect wise with all the kids and that's why it works so well in and they they come into the room and they've just got utter admiration and love for you lot because you're the professionals and um you know this is like a, this is like a, a once in a lifetime experience for some of them um and the way you sort of um brought them up to your level you know not all of them but it's you know a lot of them up their game a lot their their respect the the changes in some of those lads was unbelievable from from their little journeys you know and it, it that was that's the the transition that i saw some of those lads make mm. just made made that for me it's um yeah I, <laughs> gets me all emotional oh 
Because we've all been there though, do you know what I mean? Like we have been them boys. We know what it's like to be one of the only boys in the studio, to be, you know, is dancing cool, blah, 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 blah. It's like the Billy Elliot story, right? We could, uh, we could help, you know, encourage them if they were having down days, if they're having doubts, you know, some of them were getting shooky. In Inverness, I thought, oh, it's going to be tight. We might have to pull it, you know? It was really <laughs> tight. Like, we had about 10 boys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nearly had to pull you out as well, late a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was probably running around like a little kid as well, acting like with them. But you know what? Actually, I I teach a lot now, and my, so lots of my um, teaching and the way I kind of learn how to handle and you know be and have a respect for the kids and the nurturing of talent. Well, a lot of that comes from that experience of that tour because we had no choice but to learn and get to do that. So I will always appreciate that. So. I'll stop you there and I want to go on to the next question, uh, which was a specific, I mean, we're talking about it, but like a specific memory that sticks in your mind, either um, a show memory or uh, a creation memory. I mean, you, you hit one then, Rubes, which was one of mine, of that, that kid trying to stick his toe inside Leighton's mouth for fun. Like, that is just imprinted in my brain. Um, and I had another one that I was thinking for you, Ads, where do you remember near the, the end of that week when we created it and you were struggling because you'd like ripped your groin in one of the set scenes? Yeah, I'll tell you exactly when that was. That was actually on the, on the, on the last show uh, that we were performing because we only had one week and there was no covers, were there? Yeah. Uh, it was when, and my dad had flown up to, to Glasgow as well with my stepmom to see, <laughs> to see the show. And I, it was when we, because uh, we didn't have an interval in that, at that point, did we? Yeah. We just yeah. had to go straight through. And it was just after we get the, we rip the pig's head off and we go chanting up and we go up to the ladder with the pig's head. And then I, at that time, we threw the um, pig's head up and it sort of silhouetted in, in, the, in the moon. And then what happened was it, it blacks out and then it opens up to the next scene with, with Ralph and Piggy coming out. But in that blackout scene, I had to get down and out really quickly. And because I had so much blood on my hands, I slipped <laughs> off the ladder. And I landed in literally in between three levels of decking, like sort of broke up like this. <laughs> body, body slam back, smash my head, smash my elbow. And all I could think of was, I, I, I've got to get on for the next scene. And I roll off. Luckily, there's the crash mat there because I'm eight foot high up on the decking. And I roll off and splat on the crash mat. And I get in and I've got to put the coat on, the big uh, Jack's big coat. And I can't bend my elbow It's because I whacked it that hard. <laughs> and I, I put this coat on. And so the, for the rest of the show, I, this is hard what two thirds of the way through a third of the way through the show and i'm raging because my dad and my stepmom are in and i can't do it properly and then the moment when simon comes up from the um from the pit and i see him and i run up and i do a big stamp the stamp to kick on his head and i put my foot down on his coat and the coat goes sliding and then i rip my groin yeah, <laughs> Mate, I vividly remember you coming out for the fight, that, that final fight, and you just, you were like, uh, uh, we were fighting. I was, and then, but the next day, I had a bruise from here to here, all the way, but luckily I remember it was that. Show anyway, so, um, yeah, that was, that was not a comfortable moment. <laughs> That set was not forgiving, let's just say that. No. no cushions, no nothing, just metal bits and bobs all over the place. And my, you know, timid little self, which is trying my best to just wonder about it and just keep my body cute because people were bashing themselves left, right and centre. It was wild. It was all them hidden lights underneath the structure, <clears throat> wasn't it? After five minutes, it's like slash toes, cut feet scratch your arms oh yeah it was a <laughs> and the fact the fact is that each show was so inconsistent with the lads that what you're going to get you didn't know if a lad was going to jump out of a wrong hole or uh or you were going to get a barrel rolled or like a stick like, so, 
it was carnage. Some of those uh, end game, some of the end games at the end, wasn't it? Tommy, you yeah. must. Have, that was like death run gauntlet. I just that's, oh. that's <laughs> some of the times you. I can't remember which which venue it was, but they were not forgiving on you in the slightest, and you were getting <laughs> up as well. Do you remember they threw a stick at me? Like yeah, javelin, like <laughs> yeah, javelin, and then I. I got hit by a bag, but I stood on a, a blazer. And then sometimes a barrel was going to go into the pit and I had to like save a barrel. It was just, it was carnage. But I mean, I mean, we're speaking about that bit where you ripped your groin as, but at the same bit when, um, when Rubes kicked Leighton in the face is one of the things I will never forget. Yeah, when I, was on stage. I just had a flashback. <laughs> His face. face. Mm. Your bare toe. I got the fear, man, for about a minute and a half while you were running around. I literally was panicking. I was like, I killed him. I've, I've done it. It's happened. And the He's whole off. thing is like, out there. I broke his neck. Oh, honestly, that anxiety was through the roof. I had to tell the tale. It's all good. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to get up. I just thought, hey, well done. There's so many little things that happen throughout the show. Like, you know, every show was different. And because it was dangerous, like you say, with the set and... Uh, the barrels and I mean one of my favourite things was the food fight you'd be like dancing around and all of a sudden you find a little dairy milk on the floor and then you just dash it at some little kid <laughs> like you just <laughs> like but that, that was the job do you know what I mean that's what you got to do cheese like the best food get the hat like just stealing those Haribos there like you know what little is like not spot. today mate you're not having those I'm having them just all oh, the onstage banter <laughs> and like the the realness as well from it so <laughs> That should take us on to the next kind of thing I wanted to chat about, which is a specific Scott memory. As Scott had a, you know, a, a huge input into this show as he did a lot of new adventures and amp work. Um, so I wanted to ask you if there was some, uh, um, you know, any thought that pops into your mind, doesn't have to be this show related, just a general kind of uh, amblerism that you've uh, kept with you. I remember, my first job when I joined Edward Scissorhands and obviously you're all fresh you're trying to like you know do your best etc etc I'm always doing my best obviously but you know what I mean so um I was having physio and Scott used to come around and just like check up on everyone and he came in and I was having um needles like acupuncture dry needling in my quad and he came around just to check see if I was all right and for some reason, it's not like a hilarious story, but it was just one of those moments that really always stuck with me with Scott. And uh, he didn't notice that I had needles in my leg. And he just slapped my leg like that. And there were needles <laughs> either side of the hand. Oh my God, I've never sweated so much in all my life. And he, did, he was like, have a good show, mate. And I was like, <laughs> that, that's my Scott story. <laughs> Nearly shoved a needle right through my leg. Yeah. I'm apart from millions of stories with Scott, but I can't tell you on here. <laughs> I'm not allowed. Yeah. So you know what? Obviously, coming into New Adventures and working with Scott so closely on that show, it was the it was the first time I was getting to work with all of you. Um, and I obviously, apart from the the, the fun that we all had um, when the show was down, but when I also remember when in the beginning of the process, he was so clear with me uh, that he wanted me to feel like this was my part as well. Cause obviously I wasn't, I didn't create it and it wasn't, I wasn't the original. Um, so I always felt like he was just, I felt very welcome and very at home with him. Um, the gentle spirit and just, yeah, I felt like very looked after. And I was always obsessed with like, I mean, I'm, I don't think I am anymore, I grew out of it, but I was giving leg, you know, bam, bam, shbam, bam, always giving it a little something. And he obviously must have clocked that. And he came up to me one day in rehearsal, was like, come here. And there's just this little bit in the solo. And he was like, it was like, I want you to go, bum, 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 and just give me this um, poncho. And I was like, yes. And then we took a sis, you got me, put my legs in there, show them, what it's, show them what's good. And you know when you're just like, it's clearly just monitored and just like being aware of me, just like loving to live my leggy life. And he came up and was just gave me that little moment. I just thought, what, how, how cute, didn't need to do that. It, was, it wasn't necessary, but he kind of made it a part of the piece. It was just really cute. And yeah, it's just a memory that I will always remember. I just thought it was, it was unnecessarily lovely 
and for just for me and it's fab. Yeah, that's great. I think adding on from that, a, a big thing that I love and have great memories of of Scott is just that he he would always uh, think of other people and uh, uh, you know before himself, even in the studio, you know, in life. And he he was so generous. Uh, his his ideas and his creativity was just uh, mind blowing. In Carman, uh, for a I think it was pretty much a whole tour. One of the seasons, I'm not sure which was. In the pre-show of the Carman, um, I used to have this moment as Hot Rod where I would go up to uh, the telephone box on the side of the Dino's office and just pretend to like, call and have a chat. And then one time in there was a little like a little toy car. And I was like, ah, and Dino come up to me, Scott, in character as Dino, little, little present here for you. And I was like, oh my God, that's so sweet. And then, and then he, and then the next show, there was another little toy there. And then another, li- and every time I played Hot Rod for that whole tour, there was a different little toy in there to the point where he was running out of per diems because he'd bought these like car sets and everything with like, and ended up being like lorries on top of the phone box and things like that. I, I had this whole collection of like <laughs> mini cars and lorries and trucks and diggers and tractors and all sorts. They were hanging out. He was like, they're getting too big. I can't, I've got to find somewhere else to put them now. And that literally went on for the, the whole tour. Um, and he just, he just does all, you know, wonderful things for people. You know, he's always got, um, gifts and smiles and hugs and his, as much as we all hate them, his sloppy kisses and, um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's stories about yogurt pots that I could go into, but as Rube said, it's, it's not airable. Um, <laughs> just, just an absolutely wonderful, uh, wonderful man. Yeah, I mean, for me, I was really lucky that um, he kind of, I, I performed like quite a few roles that he'd created, which could be quite daunting, but he was, he was so good with me. I remember like, I must've gone out there and butchered some of his roles a hundred percent and he'd still be like so constructively, <laughs> like he'd give me these little post-it notes with the, the notes on and just stick them on my, on my mirror. Um, and he was, he was so good, he was so helpful. Um, because I must have been, I must have been rubbish when I was young. I was not like he. He just found a way, and he was he, late, later in his career when he was choreographing for plays and stuff. He found such a good way in to help people move or tell a story or, you know, act. Um, so I think he was, he was, yeah, he was special. He definitely had that knack of if he wanted something to happen on stage, his way around to make that thing happen. Uh, he he could do like if you weren't sure like because obviously I I did Dino uh, which he yeah. created in Carmen as well and um, you know we we and Doctor Dross as well things like that it's as well as being very different in how we all played the roles and shared the roles with him um, he would still be like you said Dom very constructive in how uh, as as well as allowing you to have your own take on the role. How he still wanted you to do it as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like what well, it's like what Leighton was saying with them. Um, he said he wasn't original cast Simon, but I think every cast that did the revivals, it was kind of like an original cast because Rubes's Jack was different to Adams, but then mm. you know Simon evolved everything. You know, which yeah. is which is amazing. Like, it, and that's like Leighton was saying he didn't feel like he was doing somebody else's role. This is how you do it. I mean, that's across the board with New Adventures. We're so lucky that we get to have input and be uh, our versions of a character. And hopefully, you know, they help us direct into making them work. But We were just so lucky to like have worked with Scott because you knew when he was in the room because he commanded the space and there was no slacking. And yeah, yeah, but every idea that was thought about was put into the mix. There was no wrong or right answers at the time. It was all about finding the seed and growing it. And he would listen to you and he would process what you were saying. And then sure often than not, he would take the idea and evolve it into something else. And 
I remember him having the book and like someone said something to him and he was like, oh, right, okay, one second. And it's like he, you know, had a photographic memory of the book and he would read the line and be like, oh yeah, this is this bit in the book. Like, and, you know, it was just amazing that like he had such an energy that it was all about the work. It was all about the creation. And then on top of that, when the project was about the young lads, he loved the kids. He was like, it was more about them. And he sort of let us be. He loved the underdogs. He wanted the kids that needed it more than the ones that were, you know, like the younger ones. He wanted the younger ones that had never done this before to be the, like the best thing that they had ever done. And I remember mm. watching him and going, that kid there who had never done a step in his life, he's like, that's the one that I'm going to push this week <laughs> yeah. because he's got yeah. something. You know, he always mm. saw something in every single person. I remember we, we started off like we'd have, 20 guys, and they're going to be between aged 11 and 18. By the end of the tour, we'd have Casa 30 odd between 8 and 22, because he'd be like, I'm not, I'm not turning this kid down. I'm having him. We've got to make it work. We'll have another line. We'll just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I remember at the start, like when we was in some of the audition process, his hands were on his head and covering his face, uh, and he would get quite frustrated and wound up. But he's a real softie. Like as soon as we got performing and rehearsing and saw what was going on, I don't think there was a venue where me and him weren't in tears at some point watching the show mm -hmm. uh, because of <clears throat> of the journey that all of those lads had through throughout the process. Um, right. So next section. No. So I thought we could ask somebody else in the chat a question. Whoever it wants to be and however we want to do it. How different it was over in Australia. I know it's kind of a different vibe. Yeah, it was. Um, it was different as well because you remember we had our guys. I can't remember. Was there was there seven of us that would do it regularly or whatever that or nine of us or summer. Whereas in Australia there was just the three of us and um, me, Dan, and Luke. And Dan and Luke were doing parts that they covered and had performed but hadn't done them consistently and yet so we were responsible for the kind of pros and the kids at the same time with Alan and Etta and then um, it was it was harder but then in some respects we had a bit more time and it was just the one cast and it, in the end it, it's the same result you all like get on like and it's amazing and these guys they were from like the back end of Victoria you know it's like when you know when they travel from nowhere in the UK and we'd, we'd be doing Plymouth and they'd be like oh I'm from the bottom of Cornwall or that we'd be in like Salford and they'd be in like from Carlisle or some, it, so they were like two hours in, two hours out from some rural town just because they wanted to be there. And I was just amazed every time we did it, I was amazed that there's, it, it's this, it, it, it happens and it, it's what it creates and that people have got this passion to do this and um, just what the, what the project's all about. And it was amazing. Like, I mean, Melbourne's a great city and the art centre treated us so well. Yeah, I just loved it. Like, it's, it's, it's what happened with you guys. It just, I was lucky enough it happened out there, you know, and I was so grateful to be a part of it. I was just going to ask, like, obviously looking back now after a few years of having a bit of a, like quite a few years, a bit of a breather and obviously we've gone on and continued with our careers. But what would you think from Lords of the Flies you have taken to further yourself? What is, was there anything in Lords of the Flies that has helped you progress into what, what you've done so far? Leighton first. Ooh, all right. Um, yeah, I, a lot of things actually. Like I said earlier about the whole teaching aspect and working with young um, kids, you know, I hadn't done that as much. I'd worked as a child, but not as an adult working with kids. Um, so in some, sometimes in my head I thought, I'm going at these kids like being like, we need to do this, we need to do that. If I would have worked with myself at that age, at 14, whew, I would have been like, oh my God, because I know I was a nightmare back in the day, back in the day. Um, so no, genuinely, um, looking back on it was such an experience um, that helped me grow as, I think, a performer and an actor anyway to help me kind of lead and command a room and kind of like, you know, help others and make them feel comfortable. Cause sometimes they would be down in the dumps about it and you'd have to lift their spirits, I'd have my little baby queens and we'd do choreo in a lunch break. Like, just like, do you know when you can just connect to a couple of them? Um, and it's been amazing. 
uh, touching it at the very beginning, um, to work in the West End of, um, everybody's talking about Jamie, and there's a boy called Alex, who was from the London cast, I think. Yeah, and then there's another Alex in the current Jamie tour, who is, who was in the Bradford, I don't remember their second names, but, so don't quote me, but two Alexes, one in um, Jamie West End and one on the tour, just so happens to be Lord of Fly Boys. And you don't realise straight away, because obviously it's not us being rude, but we worked with 200 kids or so, you know what I mean? And they grow. When you're 13, as opposed to when you're 20, it's a whole different story. And they come up and they have a familiar face, and then they're like, remember me? And as soon as I say that, I'm like, Lord of the Flies, and then I try and remember the venue, and I get it. Um, and it's been like that pretty much since... You know, my working career, I've really bumped into some of them in auditions. And it's been really <laughs> sweet. It's a legacy. And, you know, it's a legacy to have them kids, for him to be a part of, like, all these kids, you know, live and prove that they're going out and slaying the industry now, and they're working professionally. And it's just, it's just amazing to see. So that's been my kind of, like, round up journey of it all. I'm going to follow on from Leighton there, because uh, a, a similar thing for me is that... Um, even still now, um, in fact, uh, towards the end of last week, I got an email and a message from Ben, uh, little Ben. His, he, when he was 11 or 12 at the time, he was like playing football, had a football contract with, a, I think, a championship team or something, like had a real good future football-wise. And he has now just accepted a, a scholarship with um, Ballet Hamburg. And so, wow. so, so I constantly, not not constantly so much now, but, um, but yeah, I'll very very occasionally have messages uh, from parents to say thank you. Um, you know, things that I've taken from it personally, I've I, I like to think I've gained a little bit more patience. I think my other half and little boy might disagree sometimes, <laughs> but the one thing, the one thing that I will massively take from it is, is we, our sort of little motto at the beginning of the production was, you know, if we can even just change one or two kids lives, uh, then that's like, that's like our job done. And I think we've absolutely stratospherically uh, eclipsed one or two lives that we've changed. And that for me is, is what this show is all about. And I would, I would come back in a heartbeat and, uh, and do, do that again for other people because it's, it has changed a lot. Of I think um, I won't add to it because we've gone all day and you've kind of said all my thoughts. I just thought we'd just wrap it up with final thoughts. Um, and mine, like Leighton said, was legacy. People got into like vocational training, full-time schools. And then from then on, it's produced these, uh, you know, professional careers. And that you see this, these kids walk into the audition room or you see them out and about on the circuit, like Leighton said, and a couple of guys in, you know, talking about Jamie or Billy Elliot, Magic Mike, Dirty Dancing, numerous shows. Um, and then they come into our company. They, they work on your adventures again. And because of Lord of the Flies, Romeo and Juliet could happen as a project. And some, some guys were in that. And then they've come into Swan Lake. Uh, and then they've into red shoes as well. So I just find that um, mind blowing that, you know, that couple of weeks in Salford has produced this, you know, it's amazing. So um, I thought that that's uh, a final thought. If anybody's got anything uh, else to add. Lord of Flies for me was probably the most personal show because I felt uh, probably like all of us did that I was that kid once upon a time. And if I was at that age, 15 years old, that would have been the thing that I wanted to do. And it hopefully would have been the thing that got me into, you know, new adventures. Cause that was always my dream at that age. So I knew what they were going through. And I remember speaking to a lot of them thinking they have no idea how close they are and how the, the journey of becoming a performer is right, right in front of you, even if you've just started. And I always think, you know, always back an underdog because you never know and back yourself and have the passion. And again, you know, going on, you know, these, these, some of these kids have gone on and become professionals and are skyrocketing into the 
careers that they have and many of them will continue to do that that we you know like continually continually hearing that these that lord of the flies as a project wasn't about putting on that show from tuesday to saturday it was about opening up this massive group of young guys that have connected and gone on to be performers so and i think even those ones that haven't gone on to continue to perform it still had a massive impact with them their families in in one way or another so you know even if you know our goal wasn't to get everyone into performing colleges or, or, or in front of audiences or to become actors or dancers or, or whatever. It was just to do, to get them to do something different. You know, originally it was underprivileged kids from uh, uh, suburbs of Glasgow just to try and get them to dance a little bit and introduce dance into their lives. I think the journey from start to finish is, is, is crazy, but it's benefited everyone that's uh, worked on that show, I think. Mm-hmm. Lovely to speak to these guys as always. Um, so everybody out there, thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the Q&A and we didn't waffle on too much. Uh, nobody cried, which was good. I thought we might get emotional, really but we did, did all right. Um, another thing is if you fancy learning more about Lord of the Flies, uh, I think at the end of this week, there's going to be a link to maybe learning some rep and a creative task that we used while creating the show, possibly with me and Rubes. I don't know, maybe a Jack and Ralph reunion. Could be on the cards. Top secret. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bye. 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 Ciao, Bellas.